while to come out. Your prayers have been answered. Here they come. Here we go. The hot rods from hell. The hot rods from hell. They're so good. Feels like I'm back at the drags in 1966. to Old Bridge Township Raceway Park. I'm Dave Knapp for Summit Racing Equipment, and we want to welcome you to the old-time drags and rod run here at RP, where you are going to see the hot rods from hell in just a few moments here. You can see it behind me, getting ready for round number one of competition. If you've never seen them before, they're pretty wild. 200 miles an hour, travel a quarter mile in six seconds. Short wheelbase cars means they move around a lot. Hot rods from hell, round one, coming up right now. They're fired up and ready to go, and in just a moment here, we are going to see Frank Schuster versus Emil Rolando. Slowly pulling up, getting ready to do their burnout in the water box. These cars are definitely bringing something different to the sport of drag racing, and I think the fan response is pretty good. Well, I hope so. That's the whole reason why we're out here is for the fans. We're out here to put on a show, entertain the spectators, and we really love doing it. The burnout's complete, as you can see from the tire marks on the quarter mile. Emil Rolando and Frank Schuster, they've done their burnouts here. The altercation of Schuster definitely getting loose. If you look at the groove on the track, he was all over the place on that burnout. As they now back up, they're going to back them up into the hot track, the tracks they just laid down with those big back tires. Emil Rolando in the right lane, the altercation, 32 Bantam. Best run of 6.58 at 2.08. Frank Schuster a little quicker for his best run, a 6.50 at 2.09. away just a little bit a 649 with a 4 209 miles an hour Goodyear Lane got it that time the Hell on Wheels team coming back for the semi-final round going for the big bucks and in just a moment here we're going to see Mark Herbold the Iron Horse 23 T bucket taking on Leroy Blackman in the Blue Moon 48 Fiat there under the tower even louder on the 
clever now. It kind of be interesting to be something similar to the old days, but with a little bit more horsepower. So, starting line fills with smoke. That'll clear out in just a moment. Here as the cars back up. They have so much power in their car. I mean, they, and it's almost impossible to keep them straight on the, on the track. Actually. There's no prize for low ET, but it is pride, and definitely everybody wants it. Going into the semifinals, of course, if you run quicker than your competition in the next round, you will have lane choice. Not real important today so far, but you never know who's going to oil a lane and turn it to garbage. So everybody looking for the lane choice and, of course, looking for the wind light as they back up the crew out there, showing them exactly where to stage up this vehicle. The final job of the crew is to back this car up. It will be all up to the driver. Leroy Blackman, the Blue Moon, who has run a best of 7, 17, 195 miles an hour. Mark Herbold and the Iron Horse definitely got an ET advantage, running a best of 695 at 195, with both racers looking for their first 200 mile an hour pass here at Old Bridge Township Raceway Park. A 715, 189 miles an hour, an 842 at 154 for the T bucket. Obviously, having problems the whole way down the quarter mile. Reaction time was late, the car was all over the place. So, Leroy coming back for the next round. Blue Moon coming back for the semi final round. Every hardcore drag fan knows that hearing the fire up in the pits is just about as much fun as watching them run down the track. It lets us get up close and personal to feel that horsepower bouncing off our chest and smell the fuel. Plus, it serves a real practical purpose for the crew. It lets them check out all the systems, the clutch, brake, transmission, fuel system, everything, put a little heat in the motor and get them ready for the evening's event. Doug Norbert, looks like he's ready. Let's fire it up. Flooded. What do you got? <laughs>
the unsung heroes are on any race team are the crew members. They do all the heavy work and don't get the glory. In this case, we've got uh, Ernie here. Ernie, what do you do on the car? Well, I do mostly uh, general maintenance, and uh, we work on a tune-up together. Neil and I put our heads together on it. So you kind of like the crew chief? Kind of like, yeah. Partner and in the, in the car also. And how about Brian over here? Any particular job, Brian? Just all around. Uh, wherever I'm needed, I just jump in there. Uh, cleaning to plugs, whatever it takes. Right. And how about Calvin down there, the big boy? Well, I'm the old guy. You know, I've been in about 41 years, and uh, when I crashed the police car, I didn't, couldn't do it any longer. We kind of got together with Neil. Been doing it ever since. So I just stand back, and unless they really need me, I kind of talk to people and just enjoy myself now. You guys look like you have a good time out here. You're running hard. Crash a police car, build an altar. Let him up! Drivers get the signal to fire him up. And we're going to hear those alcohol burning motors as we get ready for a great battle here. It is going to be the Bucket of Thunder 23T Bucket. Pulling up into the Goodyear Eagle Lane here. That is Carol Hine. Right now you see Henry Hall in the Shenandoah 23T. Monster burnout for the Bucket of Thunder, Carol Hine. Looking for some fan support. He definitely got it on that burnout. The short wheel base cars backing up right now. Such a hard car to drive, just like Pro Stock Eliminator. You get out of the groove a little bit. You could be going to the wall or to the center line. Either way, you're going to be disqualified and possibly bang up your racetrack. And way down track is Carol Hine. His competition is almost back to the starting line, and Carol is way down track. These cars so evenly matched. Harry Hall has got a best run of a 672 at 205 miles an hour in the Shenandoah 23 T Ford. Carol Hine, a best run of 673. So only a hundredth of a second separates these racers ET-wise. The only difference, well, Harry Hall has already gone 205 miles per hour. Unfortunately, Carol Hines still looking for that first 200 mile an hour run. Could it happen here in first round? Last car that went down the Goodyear lane did not run well. Carol going to try to put that out of his mind and go for the big number of the scoreboard along with the wind light that comes along with it. Last moment preparations for the drivers. Time to get focused. They will pull up and stage these boards in the lights in round one. smoke out of Carol Hines' car, not going to be 200 miles an hour this time. And look at that in the Winston Lane, a 670 with a 3, almost 200 miles an hour, 198 miles an hour. And that is in the heat of the day, folks. When the sun goes down a little bit and this track pulls up, we can see the 200 mile an hour mark blasted away here at Over County Raceway Park, and the crew is loving it. Next up, we will see Neil Parker, the excavator, 48 Fiat. Listen to the numbers that this car has already run, 629, 222 miles an hour. He's going to be taking on Drew Deliva's 32 Bantam, a hot rod from hell. Best run of a 650, well over 200 miles an hour, at a 218 mile an hour blast. So both cars, high mile an hour, but mile an hour not quite as important as ET. And pulling out from underneath the tower right now, the 32 Bantam of Drew Deliva. 650 best run for him at 218 miles an hour in the hot rod from hell with the big wing on back looking for some downforce at top end he'll pull into the water and heat up those big rear slicks take it on the excavator 
That is Neil Parker. Introduce you to Tommy Oresco, the starter here at Ulbridge Towns of Raceway Park for many, many years. And uh, you've definitely seen the uh, hot rods from hell grow and grow. But uh, what's so different about these cars, especially the uh, starting aspect of them? Well, the reason I like the hot rods from hell is that they are a short wheelbase car and that you never know what's going to happen with them when they're going down the track. Yeah. It's amazing. It's really a lot of fun to not only watch these guys, but to be involved in starting them. 48 Fiat backing up. 32 Bantam of Drew Deliva also backing up. The crew going to walk out there and show them exactly where his hot marks are. They want to line them up exactly in those tracks and look for just a little more traction. The groove is so important. As you can see by looking at the quarter mile, you can see that dark strip that runs down the middle of the quarter mile, and that is what the racers call the groove. If you're in the groove, you're good. If you're out of the groove, you're loose. A 646 at 195, but smoke at top end could mean trouble for the excavator coming up in round number two. Hopefully his crew will have everything okay in the pits, and they will be able to return. But that rare red light start in the Winston Lane, he's out of there for the rest of the day. down that track as quickly as possible and as safe as possible. Uh, the hot rods from hell, we have one great group here and we're just trying to put out a nice show for the people so they enjoy it. the burnouts, and that's one of my specialties, the burnout. Welcome to Maryland's historic Cecil County Dragway. Tonight we're going to take you back in time down drag racing's memory lane, but it's definitely the fast lane. What kind of car is the Blue Moon, Lira? It's a 48 Fiat Torpolino. It's uh, got a 540K Keith Black engine in it with a 1471 high helix blower on top. It also has a uh, Mark Williams chassis, Mark Williams rear, a power glide, which does a real good job. We got 17 inch wide tires, 16 inch rims, and uh, it's all chrome molly. We're looking at uh, everything, all the safety features that you can think of in these cars. The mild steel, the harnesses, the, the fire equipment, everything's top notch. We got tachometers, we're, we got everything you can think of here. It's, it's one heck of a car that we put together here. And uh, state of the art safety equipment as well. Yeah, we got to have the state of the art. We're all certified through NHRA and everything has to be right. The chassis has to be certified yearly. Our uniforms, our clothes have to be checked out. Safety belts that we wear have to be checked every two years. Everything has to be safety conscious. You know, you're doing over 200 miles an hour. It's your life in your hands and possibly somebody else if something happens. So we've got the old style look, but the late model equipment. <laughs>
uh, basically through the California Hot Rod reunion and events that are popping up like that, there's definitely a resurge. Scott, one thing that I know the fans are going to see tonight is real professionalism. You really push that. What are some of the things that you tell the crews to do out here? Well, the big thing with uh, Hot Rods from Hell is to uh, give the person that bought that ticket uh, more than their money's worth. We're into doing side by side, smoke smoking dry hops and things like that, like the old days when uh, drag racing had some serious character, you know. And uh, you know, we want to give them a good, uh, good full pass side by side, uh, mid sixes, over 200 miles an hour. You like things that kind of get your blood pumping a little bit. Uh, yeah, I like things to move a little on the fast side. A little noise, a little action. You see this growing, the altered uh, hot rod. It's been growing since I got involved in it, and it seems to be the new wave. I mean, it's bringing back old drag racing like it used to be, with the safety aspect of the sport. We've got a lot of new equipment. But boy, the cars are snazzy. It's a good, tight-knit organization. Right, it seems like things are going 180. The old cars into the corporate thing, and now with the uh, nostalgia events, Hot Rods from Hell kind of going back the other way. Well, that's what the group's about. It's back the other way, bringing back the old days, you know, Wild Willie Borsch and the uh, flame out burnouts and smoky burnouts, and long burnouts, and crowd pleasers. You know, I like to bring the crowd to their feet. Hot Rod from Hell, it's just a meticulously prepared six second, 200 mile an hour supercharged alter. Back on the starting line, getting ready for the semifinal action here. It's going to be the Excavator in just a moment, taking on the Blue Moon in the semifinal. That'll be our first pair, the winner going to the final round for the big money. And in our other pair, we're going to have Frank Schuster taking on Harry Hall in the Shenandoah. It is going to be wild, only one American car left. Three Fiats taking on the Ford. Three squirting a little fuel into the motor. Fire him up, rev him up, put him in the water box and burn the tires, heat him up, look at the starting line and first one to the finish line is going to get the win here over in Stowns of Park. Round number two, the semi-final round of the Hot Rods from Hell. of it and uh, much better equipment and uh, because in the old days we had to make all of our parts and it was actually the stone age when we first started I think our wheels was even square at the time in the right lane that is the blue moon 48 Fiat of Leroy Blackman it's a really great group of guys we all get along real well together uh, everybody kind of helps one another if somebody needs something we help one another and it's a family affair, sort of. You know, we have food, we share the food and everything. We share information on the engines that we have, any problems we have. We always talk to each other about it and get it out in the open. I think it's a real good source for the people to watch something that's quick, fast. You know, this is what it used to be like, but this is a little bit safer than what it used to be like. The excavator, definitely the class of the field, holding the ET record. He has run a best of a six. 29, 222 miles an hour. Leroy Blackman of SCT all time of 717 at 195. Still trying to get that first 200 mile an hour run. It could happen here in the semifinal round. Look at the mile an hour, 215 miles per hour. The quickest speed we've seen all day. The crew should definitely be happy about that. Not his best ET, not his best mile an hour, but on a hot day like this, the sun on the track, they have got to be pleased going into the final round. Come on, we will open. Harry Hall, Sam Doyle, in the door right now. Music to my ears, guys. Hello, we will. Frank Schuster out of Chesterfield, New Jersey. Right outside of Town down here. 38, Fiat Popolino. Let him up! Beautiful mu music going to come out of this fire. Keep flying, hey? They get the signal, and you hear the motor start to turn. They'll fire up. Great pair coming up here. A little interesting side note to the action. Frank Schuster is in the hell on wheels. 37 Fiat, Harry Hall, and the Shenandoah 23T4, the only 
American car left in competition, that side note I told you about, well, Frank used to actually crew on Harry Hall's car until he said, you know what? Crewing is fun, but driving looks like more fun. And here he is, driving in the semifinal round. It's got to be fun sitting inside that cockpit. Now, these hot rods from hell, they're definitely different than anything we've seen uh, in the regular races NHRA does, and, and these wild machines, they're, they're not involved in the NHRA races. Uh, what's the deal with that? I think NHRA is afraid of us. I really do. They're afraid we're going to steal the thunder away from their pro stockers and their other classes. I'm sure if they got 20 or 30 of our cars out there, we would. Well, the fan support is definitely growing for these things. It's like uh, definitely some big entertainment out of the grandstands. I mean, side-by-side -side races are fun, but when they're side-by-side -side and the cars are going side-to-side, -side, uh, it's definitely a lot of fun. Yeah, we try to put on a nice burnout, you know, and uh, all we can do is put a good show on them. Yep, well, definitely got some nice-looking cars and uh, definitely fun to watch out there. <laughs> a little wild for uh, some of those conservative folks, but I can tell you guys are having a good time. The fans definitely enjoy it. Final direction by the crew, showing them exactly where to go on the starting line, creeping up very slowly. Lining them up straight, because if you're not lined up straight, you're probably not going to go straight. a 6 60 207 miles an hour close race until about a thousand foot 702 with a one at 189 definitely a close race but a little bit of haze became to come off the car in the winston lane do you feel like this group frank is a throwback to the drag racing of the 60s oh absolutely i think that's why scott jayzak put this whole deal together to give the fans a taste of what racing was really like back in the 60s the days with wild willie Porsche and you know the one-armed steering of the uh, fuel alters and those guys were all over the track, and you know, we're out here trying to do the same type of thing and show the fans something that probably most of them have never had a chance to experience. I know myself, I never got a chance to see a fuel altar for real, you know? So here we are doing it, giving them a piece of the 60s at least, and uh, giving them a good entertainment. Definitely. gonna do you let the clutch out she's gonna go left right straight up straight forward you don't know and then when you shift it your starts all over again you don't know what's gonna do then either and not much time to think about it either right no i got upside down in one and uh, it's been repaired it's here now and it's racing again the fans love these cars do you feel like you might steal the show if we were at a national event uh we did run some national events and the, and the uh, people really did like the car that's great it was usually the, they call it the crowd favorite most of the magazines so they it's 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 a pleasure. One of the nasty Fiat body cars out here this weekend is the Excavator, Neil Parker at the wheel. Definitely a serious contender. Neil, in your experience in racing, how, what kind of changes have you seen from the earlier days to what we've got now? Safety's a big thing and uh, a lot more power now. The crowd loves these cars. What's holding them back from being at national events again? I wish I knew. I think uh, in the early days they were a little dangerous. The wheel bases were shorter. Uh, a lot of guys were getting hurt, get killed in them. And, uh, I think they're as safe as any car out there, if not safer right now, and uh, I'd like to see them come back. But a lot happens out there when that light turns green. Yeah, it sure does. You have no idea what the car is going to do until uh, till you let the clutch out and it tells you. And you just wrestle it back in the lane and try to get her to the other end. It happens so quick, you don't really uh, have time to, you just react to it and 
Hope you get the other one on a straight run. Well, this is it, the final round, the moment we've all been waiting for. We narrowed the field down to two cars, two of the quickest in the place. The excavator going to be taking on Frank Schusker in the Hell on Wheels. It is going to be wild, and it's going to happen right now. Well, they've gotten the signal to fire up the Roadsters underneath the tower. Great final round coming up, no doubt about that. Neil Parker has already gone 215 miles an hour. Frank Schuster, he's run a best of 208 so far. Final round should definitely be good as they pull into the water to heat up those big back slicks for the final round. Complete. I'm here with Scott Jazak. Scott, the owner, promoter of the Hell on Wheels guys. Well, uh, how did this whole thing come about? Well, uh, I've always had a love affair with the AA fuel altered. And uh, back around 1985, I saw an article in National Dragster done by Chris Martin on the uh, wild tour of the Hot Rods from Hell, California Swing. And I thought, hey, man, that'd be a great idea to do this. And here we are. We're reliving it now. I've been doing it for eight years. Bring it on the East Coast. This has got a lot to add to the sport of drag racing, that's for sure. As they now back up from the burnout, the crew putting them right in the groove where they need to be. This is definitely the time nobody wants to make any mistakes. The crew will carefully back them up right in the exact spot where they just did their burnout. Frank Schuster now back over the line, and Neil Parker, the excavator, backing up. He will be there in a moment. side-by-side, 200-mile-an-hour side, runs, a 627 to a 652. And look at the mile an hour, Scott, 217 to 207. Man, these things have really got some uh, entertainment value to add to the sport of drag racing, for sure. There's no question about it. It's an awesome final round. And, uh, man, this is pure drag racing entertainment. You said it. Wheels up the whole way and uh, stabbing and steering, but nobody really wanted to get out of the throttle because they knew if they did, that hundredth of a second would probably cost them the race. Uh, it's all time exciting. It, it keeps you on the edge of your seat, and uh, there's no time for sitting and uh, thinking because uh, anything can happen. It's a lot faster yeah. than way back when. riding around circles or uh, going out and partying. You get to go fast. <laughs> I can dream I'm in the car. Everything, man. The speed, the sound, the smoke. There's not one thing I don't like about it. 
really bambunctious, a little cocky. Right? Burnout's got to be the ultimate thing about them all, man. The smoke all in the car and everything. Something about the smell. Oh, I love rubber in the morning. So I always love the smell of rubber. Pretty good drivers, I guess. Belize is the best part I like. Uh, it's about five G's of acceleration. 